So my name's Tom Armitage, uh, and I'm here today with my colleague Ian Holmes, uh, and we are GIS trainers and geoservice support people uh, working on the Digimap service uh, for Adena. So today we're going to talk about um, using fieldwork data um, with with Digimap and how Digimap can help when you're planning and uh, and carrying out fieldwork too. So we're going to run through a few different uh, topic areas. So before going into the field, what how Digimap can help there. Then adding data you've collected in the field to Digimap Roam uh, as annotations. And then we'll look at importing and exporting those annotations and what can be done around that. And we'll also have a, a, a quick chat about the different base maps that you can get from, uh, from Digimap that you can use in your GIS uh, to work with the data that you've collected in the field. Uh, and also a little bit about georeferencing and digitizing data you've collected using those base maps. So let's get started. Oh, yeah, this is the first time we have run this uh, Digimap webinar on fieldwork data. So if you have any questions at any time, please let us know. It will improve uh, the next time we run it. But yeah, any questions you have, please feel free to chip in at any time. Um, there's a questions panel on the right hand side there, so you can ask in that. Right. So before you go into field, into the field, um, Digimap can be useful in, in sort of planning, locating points of interest that might be useful while you're out in the field. So um, we've got just a, a regular Digimap uh, OS Ordnance Survey map on the screen here of an area popular with geology students up on Arran. And the sorts of information you can pull off this map that would make it useful are if we just add those on. So um, we've got accommodation. There's various sorts of accommodation on this map. We have a little red triangle indicating a youth hostel. There's a field study center that you might be able to book places in. And we've also got a campsite here. So knowing where you're going to stay when you go to the field is, uh, is always a good thing. Um, different sorts of um, landscape features here. So we've got wetland in the, in, down by the river. We've got north facing woodland on this slope on the left hand side. Rocky outcrops, great places to pick up information for geologists. Uh, really important things like access points, so where the footpaths are, where the footbridges and fords for crossing rivers are, all this sorts of information can be gained from the map. So um, you may base your assessment on where to go in the field on these Ordnance Survey maps. You don't want to go to places where these features aren't there if that's what your fieldwork relies on. And there's other things to do on a rainy day, entertainment sort of things. There's a distillery in this area, so if you're a bit bored on one day or uh, can't can't go out and measure the features you're due to measure, there's there's other things to do in the area. So equally important to enjoy your field work. So um, what next? Well, once you're happy with your area, you can actually use Digimap to print out um, the map that you can take into the field. So here we've got um, the grayscale version of the uh, 1 to 25,000 raster. Really good there for um, if you want to put your own information, color in areas or mark areas on there. The grayscale is really good for that. Uh, and remember, with Digimap, you can print out in A4 or A3. Uh, bigger than that might be a bit more awkward to take into the field, but if you have a, a large map printed up to A0 that you're keeping at a field study center uh, and then taking smaller maps out into the field, all of these things can be produced through uh, through Digimap's the, the print interface. Remember to use the layout preview. That's that second tab of the print interface. To make, that shows you the extents rather than the data that you'll get just how big an area it is that you um, are, are looking at. So you can make sure that your whole study site is, is encompassed on the map that you've printing. OK, so you've been out into the field. You've collected data using whatever method it is that you, you want. Uh, and now you want to write this uh, field work up. So the first thing that you can do is use the annotation tools in Rome to uh, print out an overview map. So you can create this overview map. You can mark on there your study area. You can use um, the point features, which are these sort of markers here. At, or you could mark on areas using the uh, draw and create tools here, and then label that feature as well. So this would be a good example of an overview map. This is the area we went to in the, in the wider 
context of East Anglia. The next thing you can do is then zoom in and, and sort of do your location maps. So this is the Norfolk Broads. And you can see these are the different sites in the area that I went to. You can label those up again as before. You can change the color of your text uh, as well so that uh, it stands out on the map. This map, base map here that we've chosen is actually one of the, um, the sort of, it's a base map theme that we have running through Digimap, which is much more muted colors, much better for adding your own information to. And then when it comes down to the actual site maps here, we've, we've uh, put in this sort of an area, perhaps that's where you took all your samples from, or a transect. This is the line I walked along to record this information. And uh, that's really, really good. We can add measurement labels on. So here's the length and the area of these things that were generated by Digimap using the uh, measurement label feature in the draw and create. That's that one there. Looks like a little ruler. Again, we can label these features. Rather than adding a, a, a text marker to the page, you can actually label um, the features so that when you move the feature the label moves with it keeps them together at any time you can use the select features up here you can the single arrow to click on one or drag a box over a few change the thickness of the lines the color the fill uh, how opaque the fill is as well so you can do these pretty good visualization techniques on your maps uh, and this is really quite good if you've been out, you've gathered um, gathered your data in the field and it's it's a few points or things you want to highlight on a map and you don't really want to get involved with a GIS system. You can put these sorts of things onto it using the annotations, put them onto the map. Um, and then you can also do a few other things with, with um, Digimap. So you've saved those annotations using the, the save button. Now you can view them with all the other data collections that your institution has access to. So you click on the bookmark icon on the left hand side. This is in the new Ordnance Survey Roam interface. Uh, and there you've got the open and save option. So we've saved this as a sitemap. Uh, and here it saves the annotations and the, and the scale that you're at uh, as, a, as, a, as a, a bookmarked map. Then when you go into a different collection, you can go to the open tab on the bookmarks section, the my map section, and there you can see there's the site map. You click on that and it opens up your annotations on a map of a similar scale. Here we've got the historic data, so you can see the different decades available along the top. And here you can now you've got a, some historical context to that map. Those, those sites. So we can see, well, what was my site study area like in the 1880s? You can see the sort of uh, different notations for the fields here. So some that have been drained, some that flood regularly. Uh, less vegetation in the area as well back then. Having a look at it now with the contemporary aerial photography, again, you can see how there's a uh, bit more information um, that, that might be useful for you from the aerial photography. And you can do this with all the others. You can have a look at the geology of the area. Um, if it's coastal, the marine uh, Digimap might add a bit more information too. And then there's also the environment agent, the, the, the land cover data from uh, the Center for Ecology and Hydrology, uh, which if you're looking at a broader area might give you a bit more information, um, perhaps more useful before you go out into the field to see what kind of um, land cover you can expect before you go. So it may be that you've gone out into the field and collected a lot of information um, using a GPS device or some, some sort of um, digital device to capture that information. Or maybe you've done a desk-based um, exercise in Google Earth capturing features from their aerial imagery. And then you want to add those things to, uh, to, um, to Roam, Digimap Roam, just so that you can have access to all the base maps that we've made rather than having to use a GIS. So you could have exported it from a GIS. It may be that you've created a spreadsheet of all the information that you've gathered from the field as well, or the GPX data from your GPS device. Spreadsheets, um, as long as you've got Eastings and Northings and lat or latitudes and longitudes in the data, then you'll be able to upload that into, um, into Digimap Roam. Uh, also, uh, GeoJSON is a format that you might have exported from a different web mapping interface. So let's have a, have a look at that. So this is a load of uh, tree point data that um, I got from a different source. So it was a digital data. It was, um, it was a shapefile. So I've uploaded that shapefile into 
uh, Digimap Rome, and it's given me a load of these markers. If you actually are on the annotation tools, this is from the import tab. You can see all the different uh, formats of data that it will take in. Remember, your shapefile is a selection of different files, so they need to be zipped together to upload. And then you just choose that file, and it will upload those points. If you've selected, whichever marker you have selected will be the point markers that, that will upload. But you can also upload uh, lines and polygon data, too. It just doesn't have to be points. Uh, so that's uh, how it looks. Obviously, once it's imported, you can edit that. So here, I just use the uh, select group features here to drag a box over all the points and then just change them to the tree symbols. Uh, and then I've started labeling individual uh, trees using the, uh, the the label feature option. Un unfortunately, when you upload data to um, Digimap, it doesn't... Um, it, it doesn't allow you to use any of the attributes of that data. So really, this is just for a, a quick look at the distribution sort of thing. We are hoping to add this functionality at a later date that may um, allow you to label the features that you've added up by the attribute data that you've uh, imported with it, or um, use some other sorts of features to set the colors or the sizes of, of, of whatever it is that you've added. But at the moment, it's just a case of, uploading the points and then um, labeling them or, or changing the symbology manually using uh, the annotation tools. So we've looked at bringing data you may have collected in the field into um, Digimap, but it also may be that you've done sort of things, you've drawn on your, your, your um, study areas, your, your site locations, or marked on points where you've gathered information, but it comes to the point there where you actually well, actually now I need to do a little bit more with this I need to do some analysis or some more advanced styling uh, um, and I need to export it out of Digimap and into my GIS so what you can do there is use this export data from Rome functionality export your annotations into one of these file formats which you can then you display in your GIS or Google Earth or again GeoJSON if you want to put it into another web mapping service. So here's the uh, the transect and the area that we uh, had in um, Ordnance Survey Rome as our annotations and you can see the create tab has all that stuff about drawing the features, the import is where we brought it in and there's an export tab here too. Three options, the shapefile, KML, GeoJSON uh, and so I exported these uh, two features as a shapefile uh, and this is them um, opened up in QGIS or will, again equally anything that will read a shapefile will uh, will um, read the data that you've exported. I've also downloaded from data download uh, some 1 to 25,000 color raster data to put in as a backdrop. So if you're maybe unhappy with the choices of base map you have at the scale that you're looking at that's a good reason to export from Digimap Rome or if you want to do some some analysis or some uh, more have more options when it comes to styling the data then this is the way to go to export those uh, annotations out and put them into into something like a GIS package so I've mentioned there downloading base maps uh, and there's some really good stuff that you can put behind the data that you've uh, collected in the field from uh, from Digimap. You can go into any collection. It's probably more useful to um, uh, take the, um, the the raster data sets when you're putting them behind your your um, your data that you've collected in terms of visual display of maps. But there's other things. I mean, if if you're wanting to um, analyze this say you've got a collection of different species and you want to see if there's any relationship between them and the geology of the, of the surrounding area then you can use the geology data put that in as your as your backdrop and then see if there's any any uh, correlations there to be made use your GIS to analyze that GIS is very good also you can uh, mute the colors of those uh, raster data sets uh, obviously you'll select the own your own or use a styling file for some of the vector data but with the raster you can mute the colors or make them grayscale very simply in a, in a GIS so some of the useful data sets that we'd recommend 
Will be, well, basically any of the raster base maps from the Ordnance Survey data download collection just depends what scale your, um, your data has been gathered at as to which one is the most appropriate or how wide an area you want to show. Um, they start with the most, uh, the, the, the most detailed or the, uh, the largest scale data at the top and then it decreases down in scale to the smallest scale data at the bottom of, of that section in data download. Um, the historic maps, again, various scales, various dates, but they are um, scanned rasters, so very good for just sl slipping behind your, your data just to see if there's anything in, in the past that could have contributed to the, the, the distribution or the reasoning as to why you found the things in the field that you have. Uh, aerial imagery, always very useful to sort of stick behind your, your data collection, gives you a very good idea of what was there in the field at the time, as long as it's, it's recent enough. Um, DTM data and OS from, from, from Ordnance Survey or, or the LiDAR uh, data collection. So these digital terrain models, really good for making 3D maps, looks really good with your aerial imagery. And of course, again, in coastal areas or if you've been collecting data offshore, the marine charts are a really good backdrop for your data. So let's have a look at a few of these sorts of things. So here, this is the same map again that we just saw, but in QGIS, you can use this um, grayscale function. Just tick the box, grayscale by lightness or one of the other options, and it just takes the colors away, makes the data you've added stand right out. Really, really nice. Another thing to look for here when dealing with the raster data is, is you can see this resampling box on, uh, at the bottom on the right-hand side is to change your zoomed-in resampling method from nearest neighbor to cubic. Um, and that basically gets rid of the pixelated qualities of, of more zoomed-in raster data. Obviously, you can still zoom far too far and everything looks... But it, instead of looking pixelated, it just looks a little bit blurry. And it can really sort of take the edge off um, the sort of nasty effects, particularly on the text, when you're just a little bit more zoomed in than the source scale. Um, it, it just makes things look a little bit better. So here, this is a combination of three different data sets here. So that's grayscaled 1 to 25,000 raster, as we saw before. But we've also added uh, a DTM data set, which we've turned into a hillshade, and the geology. And here they've been combined. This is, again, in QGIS. Um, so the, the DTM data has provided that hill shading. This is the um, uh, area around Corfe Castle where there's this long uh, ridge of, of different rock types across uh, that separates the, um, uh, the Isle of uh, Purbeck, I think it is, from, from the... Um, from the mainland, as it were, uh, it's not a true island. Um, but you can see the hill shading makes the makes that that sort of 3D quality stand out a little bit there. And we've got the um, the one to twenty five thousand raster for its uh, all the detail and allows you to locate yourself in the area. And then we've added in the um, the the geology data over the top, which kind of explains why that feature is there with this sort of horizontal uh, feature going across there picked out in the geology and in the uh, and in the topography. We've used a blending mode on these um, things so that they, would, if we'd use transparencies on three layers, we wouldn't really be seeing much detail of any of them. But by using the blending mode, if I just go back, you'll be able to see that here. Uh, blending mode was normal on this one, but you can use a different one called multiply, which uh, essentially is like putting three different layers on an overhead projector, for those of you who remember those. Um, uh, basically, like three transparent layers, each with different colors and things on light, and it sort of shines a light through all three, so they all have equal prominence, and there's none of this sort of uh, white color washing out the, um, the, the, the rest of the colors on the map. So it looks very nice. And again, good for marking your features on once you've uh, collected them in the field. You're getting uh, information about slope and geology and, uh, and the topographic feature from Ordnance Survey all at the same time with your data. So we mentioned 3D, uh, and here this um, little layout has been created in a GIS uh, using um, the aerial imagery from the aerial Digimap, the Get Mappings aerial imagery, and also the uh, digital surface model from um, the LiDAR collection. You can tell it's a surface model because we're getting this detail picked out on all the trees uh, in the forested areas. 
So again, you could this has been created in a GIS, so your data could be marked out in these fields. Uh, really good for archaeological stu studies, um, things like hill forts. You can sort of get a good impression of what was visible from that site uh, in the past by using these sorts of uh, 3D landscapes. This was generated with QGIS to 3JS, a plugin for QGIS. But there's similar things in ArcGIS. You can think, use things like ArcScene or some of the new features in ArcGIS Pro to generate these similar sorts of um, terrain models with with your data marked up on it. So um, going back to what we said uh, at the beginning, where if you've printed off a map from Digimap, uh, to take into the field, or any map that you've taken into the field. Uh, you've marked on features whilst you're out there, colored shaded areas, colored things in. You can actually do something with that map once you get back. You can scan it, and then you can take the scan of the map, put it into a GIS, uh, reference it to a field, uh, reference your field map to a base map downloaded from Digimap, and then use the GIS to capture data from the from essentially what was the paper map into a digital data set. So here's a, a print map from um, a Digimap that's been shaded in, colored in. Uh, again, this is the, the geology of an area. Uh, and then what we've done, you can add that as a layer into the GIS and then use the georeferencing tool. Again, QGIS or ArcGIS both have these uh, georeferencer tools. And essentially what you do is mark on control points between the, uh, the base map and the, uh, the scanned map. So find a feature that's in both maps as precisely as you can. And that's why it's quite good to use a um, printed map from Digimap because you can put those grid lines on there or pick a product that has grid lines. So you can use the intersections of grid lines to do this very precisely. If you don't have that luxury, your field map doesn't have the grid lines on, then you, you're going to have to use notable features on the map so things that are pretty fixed are, are better so um, coastlines are only good if they're rocky and they're fixed and you could it's clear if they're nice steep coastlines where, 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 where it's not high tide or low tide on either map so things that are really fixed like that or road junctions are another good one that, 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 that sort of don't move around uh, based on someone's interpretation they're quite fixed so yeah, rocky headlands, um, road junctions, uh, river meeting points are okay as long as one of the maps isn't very old, uh, or braided river channels are quite difficult, or, or meanders do tend to move, but probably not over the timescales that you're dealing with here. But yeah, avoid sort of sandy shores uh, or or things. So if you can find buildings as well, old buildings that are that are, are fixed over time, um, then then you're very safe with those too. So once you've got your uh, map georeferenced, um, you can use some of these things, uh, these digitizing tools, to start capturing information from the map. Um, so if you've shaded in areas, you can start to trace around the edges of those polygons. These are the, the digitizing tools from, uh, from QGIS. And there's some useful extra bits. So you can cut holes out of uh, polygons to make sort of island polygons within them. Uh, always use this this magnet tool here. Again, it's available in all all good GISs where it allows you to trace along other lines. So you're not generating gaps in between um, two polygons, what we call slivers, uh, um, and other things. It kind of helps you build clean data in the first place. So using these these sorts of tools, you can trace that information off the map. Again, you can um, capture attributes at the same time. So you create a polygon or a point, and then you can capture any attributes that you gained in the field, uh, dips and strikes for geologists, or, or ages of buildings, widths, uh, heights, and, and girths of trees. These sorts of things can be captured as attributes as, as you're uh, entering the data. Uh, into your GIS. Okay, so really that's all we've got. So in summary, Digimap is, is ideal for planning your field work, printing out maps before you head off. Um, it's also really good for capturing the field data if you've got pretty basic data sets or providing context to the field work that you've done with site maps and overview maps, that sort of thing. 
you can take anything that you've captured and export it out for a GI out to a GIS if you need to do any more in-depth analysis or, or or take your visual representation to the next level. And of course, it's always there the data download providing those base maps that you need um, for whatever purpose. But you know, really good, especially when you're wanting to put that data into a GIS software as a base map or for capturing uh, for helping you with georeferencing too great well thank you very much for listening um, we'll be sticking around for a few more minutes to answer any more questions that you have um, but thank you very much for attending and we hope to hear from you soon